How's that? Are you getting the message now? Yes. Okay. Sweet. Thank you so much, Jane. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. This is Career Lab Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday from noon to one central time. And, you know, we, we share um, some of our curriculum here. We have different topics, but the thing that's most important is for us to be serving you. So any questions that you have regarding career, any concerns you have, whether you are in a position right now where you've been for a while and you're wanting to level up, or if you if COVID completely changed everything for you and you're finding yourself um, looking at the next opportunity and you haven't interviewed in a while, or if you're fresh out of school and looking at uh, where to go in your career and want support with whatever it is in your career, we are here to serve you. So um, there's a few ways that this works. I love it when you're like Robert and you come off, um, you show your video and um, we can work directly together. If you can't do that, let's say you're in a spot where that's just not an option, um, you can type your questions into the chat. And if you're viewing in through LinkedIn Live and you're not on this Zoom call, you can type your questions into the comments and message section and Jane Coletta will make sure to get those over to me. I'll do my best to get to your questions. So one of the things that we, the, the, our approach to career coaching is for you to use your career as a vehicle to bring greater satisfaction in your life, to help you reach your potential. And that's something that a lot of folks will get going in a job and they won't understand what their purpose really is there. And so they may job hop around and, oh, totally cannot hear anything. Azura, is, can everybody else hear me? Robert, Larissa, okay. Can hear. Thank you. Azura, I think it must be something on your end. Um, yes, there is a way to call in by phone. Um, Jane, can you help Azura get, get dialed in? by phone. Um, sweet. Thank you so much, Jane. Okay. So what we, we look at is how can you grow right where you're at? Oh, we got more folks coming in. Welcome, Robin. Welcome, Mike. And how can you grow right where you're at? A lot of times people are looking at a company that seems more attractive to them and they haven't applied themselves fully right where they're at. And it may be that the company you're with isn't the best fit for you. And if that's the case, then why not really dig in, try some new things there um, and get the feedback from that. It, it, it helps launch you to the next thing so much better. So that's a little, just a, a, a snippet of sort of how we look at um, you in your career and you developing yourself as a human being in that position um, so that you're more satisfied in life overall. So with all of that, I would love to hear if we have any questions, anything that anybody's working on. Robert, how about you? <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you well. Okay. Um, well, I, you know, as you know, I have not joined. Uh, the group until today, and I appreciate the opportunity to to join. Um, I, I'm I'm joining just because I'm a couple of reasons. I'm I'm curious about the process. You, you know, you all go through um, in this sort of area. I, I've done a bit of uh, you know sought consulting, uh, career consultation before in other kind of ways and so I'm kind of, kind of just curious about um this group and and you know the approach um I I'm in career transition so um I, and and it's been a while since I've had um my my exit uh from my last role and it, it was a leadership role in an entity um in in the Chicago area um, it actually came at a time when I was actually thinking about transitioning anyway. Uh, uh -huh. So, so while it wasn't 
uh, my grace, a graceful exit um, onto something new and better. It was an exit nonetheless that I had been contemplating. It just wasn't on my terms necessarily, but um, it, it, it's actually been a, a good exploration period for me. And so I'm, I'm kind of looking for much of what you've laid out in terms of doing the uh, self-reflection effectively in order to kind of key into who, who I am and what I want to see in my work um, to reflect who I am. And, um, it, you know, there's, there's a myriad of, uh, you know, uh, options and sometimes that can be a good thing and also kind of hard to, to manage through. So. Okay. Can, so there's, there's uh, many things are coming up ideas. I'm going to have Jane, go ahead and throw in the power of authenticity link. Um, that might be something for you to check out, Robert, an evening workshop that one of the founders at Wright Foundation is hosting tomorrow evening. Um, just in terms of your, you looking at what's really authentic for you and using this process of, okay, what's a good fit? And, and she'll go deep into some tools there that I will, will be useful for you. Okay, great. Um, but now, can you say a little bit more about what you're looking for? Huh. Uh, well, I, I think I'm at, at that juncture where I have, uh, I can continue on a path that I've been on for 20 years or- Which I is? Um, help, I mean, I'm an attorney by trade. And so I have worked as an attorney and um, enjoy aspects of the work, but I know that there are other avenues to take and so um and i've actually dabbled in some some aspects of that so uh, but but not fully um and in a way that I, I think there's opportunities to do other work for sure but but what it, what are those things and what makes sense for me mm -hmm. um so that's generally where i am i think um i enjoy the work of you know helping people out and um it, it, you know, that service mission is definitely part of what I think I'd like to do in a new career if I go down a new career route. But I think context is, is means a lot to me and, and, you know, what context that is, whether it's, yeah. you know, uh, healthcare, is it real estate, is it, you know, any number of things that, that can, that can, that can sort of feed that desire. So um, okay. Trying to figure that piece out. Cool, cool, cool. So, Robert, let's stay connected. Um, I in I'll just yeah, let's stay in touch about this. I'd like to hear more and um, yeah. keep us up to date. And I'll share um, somebody who we won't be seeing on here anymore as he is got the job that he wants and is now working at <laughs> this time. Um, he he joined in five or six of these. And what he shared uh -huh. over the process was that he um, not only got into the job that he wanted and learned like how to interview and, and at, a, at a new level that he hadn't had before. Um, mm -hmm. And he was, you know, he's 40s, 50s. He said that when he started, he's starting with this new company. He was like, you know, I've never been this excited about mm -hmm. starting a job. And he's like, I'm so happy to have that in my life. It's always been, you know, I knew I had to do it, but he's like, I never had this experience of like, oh my gosh, I'm so stoked <laughs> to like get yeah. in there and get going. Yep. So I just want to hold right. that as a vision for you. Um, Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. Well, welcome everybody. We have more folks joining in here. Um, this is Career Lab Wednesday. I am here every Wednesday, noon to 1 p.m. Central. Sometimes I have guests on, certain experts. Um, and that's something, too, uh, the YouTube channel that we started using, because it's a little easier to find some of these videos on YouTube than circling back through LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. There's help with your resume, help with um, LinkedIn profile. So actually, Jane, that would be fantastic if you could throw a couple of those specific links in there for the YouTube channel. Um, and but what we're doing overall is we're helping you become who you can become through your career. So any area of life, 
you've got your your body just your relationship with your body your relationship with yourself kind of in that ego way the psychological way kind of how you see yourself you've got your relationship with your family of origin family of creation and then we have your relationship with work slash play because we like to say that work is you getting paid for play so that's what we focus on here. So anything that it, you're, how you are developing in your work, in your career, can then translate over into other areas of life. So with all that, I'd love to hear um, what, what would folks like help with today? What are you working on? James, I, I know you've tried to get in before and I know you might be in a spot where you can come off or come off and, and go for some coaching directly, or maybe you just need to type some questions in. Um, but how can, how can I support you today? What questions do you have? Khalid, welcome, good to see you. Good to see sure. you, are you able to come off? Yes, there you are. Yes, I'm a good student, so I like raising my hand. Um. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> <laughs> but George, it's very good to see you. I, see I you first of all, I have to say I, I appreciate you popping up in my feeds every once in a while. I, I, I miss you, and it's really good to see you. So I'm, I'm just happy that uh, that I, I see you more often in these forums, and uh, and I've been tuning into a few ones in the past when I don't have meetings, and today I don't have meetings, so I am excited to get a chance to talk to you. Excellent! Oh, so good. So, Colin, um, catch me up. What's going on, and what would you like help with? So, uh, so, uh, so a as always, there's always a mixture of different things happening at once. And, you know, we love riding different waves. Um, I am, um, I actually started a new, new role recently, uh, about eight months ago. And it's, it's, it's my favorite role that I've ever had. Oh, uh, I love it. it. It lets me, I think, ex like, uh, <laughs> fully be myself in a way that other roles haven't. Uh, a, f a few things kind of, stick out to me a little bit though it's like there's there's mixed support from leadership um and there's also lots of transitionings happening lots of transitions happening and, and also like i'm also kind of grappling with this idea of like you know I, i'm at i'm at a i'm at like a middle towards the later stages of of my current kind of career trajectory and want to really level up into more management leadership type of roles um, and, and thinking about like also the compensation that I'm getting is really not the, the where I would like to be. So while I love what I'm doing right now, it seems like fun, but maybe not the, t the type of responsibility that I should be aspiring to given the level of experience and kind of what I want to get to, um, as a, as a more mature person in this career, you know? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know in the company um, where the pain points are that you could help with? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And are you talking to your boss or supervisor about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm I'm being kind of uh, like uh, uh, like selected to be part of that group to address those issues. Uh, but even then, it's like I could be addressing those same issues elsewhere, but for a much greater compensation. Yeah. Okay. Are you, have you talked to them about that? I haven't yet. Uh, nor do I like. Nor I, I haven't talked to them about that. But that's just kind of what I'm going through in my head. It's like, you know, while you know, it's it, it's just kind of like yeah, what I'm sitting with right now. Yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. Had that no, this is this is uh, right now the job market is you know in such flux that there's a whole lot of opportunity kind of opening up, and so there there's a lot going on. Um, do you? What would you want if you were your boss or supervisor? If 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 you were managing you, what would you want you to do? Uh, w one is I would want me to be more involved in these high level decisions that are being made and rather than just being like yeah yeah we'll we'll plug you in like when we start moving but you know i want to be part of like the thought leadership i want to be part of the strategy 
uh, not just the one who's, you know, taking the playbook and running with it. Okay. And so are you, are you saying that if you, if you were part of the thought strategy, part of that, that you would do that, you'd be happy to do that, but you want more pay. Yeah. Have you had that conversation? Um, it's a slow conversation, but we're having it over like these development conversations, but it'd be nice to just like sit down and be like, Hey, I know you're busy. I know you got things going on, but like, this is where I'm at. And I would love to, but it's kind of like being drawn out. So my hunch with this, and you know, you'll have to tell me if I'm on or off here, but if you're anything like me, um, I will tend to avoid these conversations and find all kinds of reasons to not have them. Um, because I am so uncomfortable with conflict. <laughs> I'm so, I, I, I really don't like it. So my, that's kind of my hunch is that it, it's probably on you to say, hey, I really want to talk to you about some of this stuff and about where I'm at in the company, and what my vision is and where I think, where I think um, I'm on my growth edge, what excites me. And I want to talk about this with you because I see it. I, I think I'm in sync with where the company is headed. And this is what I would want from that. Is that doable? Um, yeah, I, I've, I've actually had that conversation yesterday. Okay. But I don't know if I was as direct. I, I think I could do a better job of being direct. I, I would... Um, but I, I did kind of, I know, maybe this is, well, I'm just going to say, it. I think I, I planted those seeds. I was kind of like, like, uh, I, I found, I found my manager getting kind of defensive explaining like, you know, we're part of a bigger machine da, 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 da. and I'm like, okay, I understand that, but I'm just expressing to you what my wishes are. If the role requires me to do this, this and that I'm down with the, I'm down with the, you know, the bigger mission, but I just want to know that that you've heard me that these are what I'm looking for. And how will you know that you've been heard? Um, whether he includes me in these other discussions, whether he, um, uh, whether, whether he kind of reformulates a plan to include my, my, my input. Um, like there's, I think there's, there's much, there's someone that I can do to express what I'm doing. But also, I'm asking him to give me work to to lighten his load. And mm -hmm. if he's willing to give me that, that shows that he trusts me to be in that process as well. Okay. So if you were to just take everything all, let's just say right now, you, you would just say as directly as you can, what do you want? Uh, I, want uh, I want a more leadership role that, that gives me authority and I want to be compensated for it accordingly. How does that feel? It feels right. Do you know how much you want to be compensated for it? Um, yeah, I'm just asking for market rate, not asking for anything like spectacular. Okay. Just, and just because the opportunities out there are, it's a, it's a, the difference is pretty, pretty big. And so I just want market rate, you know, just want to be mm -hmm. fair. Is that something that you're going to do? Is say it that directly? Um, I, I I do. I kind of want to also have something tangible in hand to say. Here's my here's like the offer that I have in hand, and to like to to kind of force the issue now rather than saying, hey, we can think about it in you know, a next promotion cycle next year. You know, I want to say like, well, here's like tomorrow I can go here. <laughs> can you? Do you have that? Uh, I'm working on it. And okay, so now back to the question, if you were him, how would you want you to, to handle this? I wouldn't expect anything different, you know, um, um, you know, do the research, do the work, handle the responsibilities that I currently have and make a case for, 
why I want more. Okay. Cool. Is this something you can do by next Wednesday? Or is, is two Wednesdays from now more realistic? Two Wednesdays is probably more realistic. I, okay. I just started... I just started in, intentionally started it this week, so I think it'll take a little more time than just one week. Okay, okay. Is two weeks doable, or do you want to make it three? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm aiming for one week, but two weeks I think is okay is doable. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I would love for you to check back in with us and let us know how that went, how it's going, and know too if if more things come up in the process, reach out to me. Okay. No, I, I appreciate you holding that space. It's really helpful. Awesome. Awesome. Kala, this is great. Um, I just want to kind of speak to this for a little bit um, for everybody. So um, part of how this works is for you to be who's ever sharing is that you're what we call co-voyaging with them. You're applying what they're saying to where you're at, what your challenges are. And so it's an interactive process, even if you're not, if you're just listening in, but that you're really taking in what Khaled's talking about, what I'm talking about, and saying like, oh my gosh, yeah, where are the conversations that I'm uncomfortable having? And yet I want something there. So that's awesome. So much of what I has, I've, I've, I've found in working with people over the years is um, people will move out of a company sometimes and they haven't really had authentic conversations with the people around them. And it can be such a loss. And sometimes it's a, it's, it's social and emotional intelligence skills. Um, we all kind of speak different languages, even if it, we're speaking English now, but we have different personality styles. So mm -hmm. Khaled, you're a, an analyzer cooperator. You know, I'm a cooperator personality style. Then we've got regulators, regulators and energizers. Regulators often tend to be in positions of authority because um, they're the results oriented. And, you know, and, and so learning how to speak to a regulator is a big deal. And, um, you know, and then for regulators, we had somebody on a few weeks ago who was just butchering her team. <laughs> And learning, okay, no, like to, to be able to um, speak in a way that a cooperator is going to say, oh, wow, you have my back. Wow, you really care about the team. And, and, and so that's such important stuff that, that if, if we don't kind of pay attention to some of this SEI stuff, social and emotional intelligence skills, in these conversations where we feel a lot of anxiety, so much loss can happen. And, and, and so that's it's one of the things I just care about and want people is is to challenge themselves in these conversations with people um, to really become who you can become. So for Khaled, you know, my vision for you is that you're a guy who knows your worth moment by moment with people and that you're you're respecting yourself uh, more and more and and having people value you, um, allowing people to value you and saying, hey, here's my value. So right now you've got some very clear things that are going to manifest that for you. It's not just not just the thought process, but you actually doing the things that then you get that feedback from the world. Oh yeah, sure enough. So this is sort of how we this this um, you becoming who you can become fits into your career. Khaled, was there something you wanted to add there? Yeah, can I ask a follow up? Um, yeah. You know, one of one of the feedback that I've gotten often when I'm trying to be this assertive you know holding my own power um is that oh you're being stubborn or like you're not listening or you're not playing along like how and it, it usually like usually kind of stings me like oh here i'm trying and trying to put my best foot forward trying to take initiative trying to do my best and oof like like mm -hmm. I, I get it maybe like the other person's not being heard or something but like I just want to be appreciated for taking that initiative taking that so I'm just oh yes 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 so this is oh so glad you brought this up yes because the the where we break down will happen in these finer and finer increments so right there Khaled when somebody is saying um 
yeah, but we just want you to play along to go in with this. There's often times where um, you're getting feedback then, that's the feedback from them about where you're out of rapport and out of sync. And it's really hard in that moment to be affirming yourself, which is what you kind of need to do to stay in the conversation. And to then also look at where are the ways that you're out of sync? Because they're letting you know that you're out of sync, that you haven't, and there's some ways that you haven't earned the right. Hmm. And that's, and it's, it's always painful. I mean, I never I, like looking I feel, at, I feel it now. <laughs> good. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And those pain points then are, then you can do the sort. Is this something for me to develop? And where, where am I out of sync here? Or it can also sometimes be a pain point in the organization. And you might have to get to the point of saying like, uh, yeah, but I want you to understand that I think this is, this might be a bigger problem here. And what's happening, I don't, I'm just going to kind of riff here, call it. I have no idea about your, the organization, but a lot of times a company will have people continually leave, leaving. And if you say, look, I'm going to become another one of these people that's leaving. And I think this is actually a big problem that the organization needs to address. And I get it. I might not have all of the skills at this level, but I'm telling you, I want to play and I want to be in this, in this conversation with you. I want to help with this. And, and please do tell me, what do you need from me? Or what are the things that, that I need to show in order for this to work so that you can, you're going deeper into that back and forth. Is any of this land in college? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm also wondering about the the my my presence while I'm having this conversation too, right? It's it's one thing to say these words, but you know, to say it in like a defensive way, in a timid way, versus saying it in a aggressive way. Like, I, I, I find myself very hard to. You know, to, to kind of balance, okay, get, let me get the words right, and also let me make sure I'm not, like, you know, being too too flimsy or too harsh. You one know, of, like... One of the best things that you can do is to just name what's going on. Like, I hey, I'm afraid that I'm coming off this way, but my intention is that we, we have a win-win here. Mm. How am I doing? Are, are we on the same page? Mm. How does that land, Colin? If so, that you're asking them. Yeah, that that uh, that, that 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 feels right. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 No, and this this is the same thing in interviews, Colin. Well, I can translate this over to in interviews. A big thing that happens in interviews is um, the person who's interviewing you is just waiting for you to be done, <laughs> and so often. You know, it's like, okay, I have, you know, 10 interviews today. And so what can be so important is for you to actually make contact and say, I'm just checking or, or have I lost you? Are we still here? Are we still on the same page? And you can do that in an interview or in, in a business meeting. And that can really be done. And it brings me to, a, I love the book, um, never split the difference where this guy he uses a lot of the same coaching that right foundation does. he references a lot of the same uh human potential and existential thinkers we use and he he says you know i learned through hostage negotiation situations he's been doing it for years he's like i am terrified until the hostage um, the hostage situation until the they say no we we're not going to go along with you there he's like as if everything is too perfect and everything seems right i know we're in for trouble i know there's going to be a horrible surprise so mm. colin if you can actually get to that point where it's like i don't think we're on the same page that's actually then when you're meeting somebody mm. That's because otherwise, until you're you're having that that uncomfortableness, 
they're off in their own world and you're off in your own world. And so you actually want to breach that and have that uncomfortable stuff happen. Mm -hmm. And then that's where, so that might be your win, Khalid, is, is, is to start affirming yourself there and say, okay, the next time I'm in a conversation where it's really uncomfortable, I'm going to be like, good job, Khalid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, am, I am definitely out of my comfort zone. And that way you're building in, we, we human beings, we try to jump too quickly without really affirming ourselves for where we're at. We have to build in that affirmation along the way. Otherwise we kind of have a sinkhole. And so, and also you're already in there. You're our, you, you already have the security. You're a valued guy. I know you, I, I, I can just say some of this stuff. Like, I know that you're, you're, you're good. And so you can count on that. You can be affirming yourself for that. You're, you are a, a decent human being. Um, and, and that just gives you kind of ground to work with. Okay. I, I appreciate all of this. Thank you so much. Cool. Cool. Well, I want to get a sense from people. I have, I, I'm flying solo today without uh, Gordon or Brian. So I have not been as on the chat, but I just want to get, is, are people relating to this? Is this helpful? Azura, this is, okay, cool. Okay, getting a thumbs up from Tiffany. Thank you. Yeah, see, I want to be affirmed too. I'm like, absolutely. So I'm asking for it. Oh my goodness, there's a lot going on in this chat. Provide review improvements of LinkedIn. Oh, Larissa. Um, yes, we are going to get you that. Absolutely. Um, there are resources for you to be using um, that we have for your LinkedIn profile. So I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to get totally sidetracked if I look at all of these comments right now, but I'm, I'm just happy to hear that people are co-voyaging here. Good. Okay. Fantastic. Well, so who who would like to come off mute and continue from here so apply this share about how you're relating to Khalid and me because this is both of us by the way I you know every review I have I'm like you know my wife's like oh my god you have a review coming up don't you <laughs> so these conversations you know so who who would like to share Eric yes Eric yeah, I'll be honest. My question is more, it's not really related, if that's okay. That's um, great. Yeah, absolutely. No, our job is to serve you here. Yeah, sure. So I I took this new role with the company about six months ago. It's something I'd been wanting to do forever, kind of closer to home to what I'd studied in my undergrad. And they've had a reorg. And I can't really going into too many details, but basically the role has changed. And right now it's, there's a lot of stuff that I enjoy doing that are being, we'll say transitioned away from me over to a counterpart for lack of a kind of a way to describe what's happening. Uh, and the kind of the role, what I thought it was be kind of that future is now uncertain. So I'm trying to figure out kind of how to best navigate these waters because uh, basically the role that I signed up for is now changing and I'm not sure well, what just, what like, is your role now if so yeah so well so I'm a production planner technically I in, in both the company I was with and now kind of the new split company that's been created uh it's just a lot of the way that it's split and kind of the way they have it set up behind the scenes, um, you know, I think maybe to put it bluntly, I'm basically kind of just a plant liaison. Um, there's not a whole lot of planning I do. Uh, so it's, you know, I'm trying to find a way to kind of still add value versus just being the guy that you have to call to talk to the plant and ask them what's going on. Um, and kind of how then to bring that up to my boss, like, you know, hey, you know, I still want to add value, but it feels like a lot of what I've been trained and studied on is now being transitioned away from me. Huh. Okay. Well, there's a lot here, Eric. 
on, yeah, the, I know. on one hand, <laughs> I, I know it was gonna be a lot that's why i didn't want to <laughs> no no this i when i say that that's a it, that means i'm happy <laughs> that's like cool. I got you. we might not get to everything right but this is this is great stuff there's a few things i'm thinking of um and 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 education to everybody part of my job what i do as a coach is um i ask questions and i'll offer observations but it's your job to tell me what's landing what's fitting what's not i mean you're the one who's living your life you know right. so so eric um my first like part of me was like oh shit like your job just got taken away from you yeah and that how is. is that a reflection of you is that does that mean that you're not doing well yeah no and it, it wasn't a case of like i said i mean this uh i think this was just due to kind of out of my control it wasn't necessarily like i'm not i'm basically new enough i haven't even had a formal review um and so it's just i think it's just kind of a nature of you know just company where uh, you know reorganization split where i kind of got on the the crappy end of the stick um or at least potentially i don't know there's you know it's a new world for a lot of the other planners as well who i have different products that are affected in different ways it's just kind of at least the products i manage it seems like a lot of the responsibilities are shifting to a counterpart on Wait, other, how is it how one. is it that those responsibilities are shifting why like yeah so basically uh, kind of without giving too much away uh, a big part of it is that we we're we're making products the the canoe company am i is making products that are then being sold to the kind of original company and then being sold to the end customer so in a sense where even though the company I'm in is making it, I don't see the demand anymore. I'm just basically, um, or, you know, I, I can see what's on the inventory side, but I don't know what they're making. So I can't, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they'll almost have to make the plan for me because I don't know what the demand's going to be. I don't see what the sales orders are or any of that stuff. Oh, and, so you're they're They're just coming to you and saying, make this many. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if there's any issues at the plant side or any plants that I deal with, uh, I guess because of legal requirements going on, they can't directly talk to the plant. So they'd have to come to me and say, hey, I heard there was this issue. Can you tell me more info about it and whatnot? Um, and so that's why I said kind of just, you know, a, a plant liaison um, because I can't can't really plan because I don't see a whole lot of demand i'm basically just reviewing the schedule they make uh and then you know alerting them oh the plant had this issue so they're going to be down for like a day so we'll have to you know you guys told me you want to make this amount of widget this day well we're going to have to you guys will have to readjust it based on what you're seeing on your end okay oh man um Well, I have so many thoughts here. One is, um, have you talked to your boss or, or manager about what is the thing that that I could do that would just make your life so much better? Yeah, and that, that was going to be because we our, our fiscal year is really weird, and it's actually going to be ending in a, a few weeks, or in actually not a few weeks, like a, a week or so, a couple weeks. So we're, we're in the review time. And so that's going to be kind of one of the main topics of the reviews, you know, as this role is changing, you know, kind of what are the expectations, what are things that I can do to make your lives easier, you know, kind of, you know, how can I add, still bring value to this role now that half of it's been taken away, basically. Yeah. So one person I'm working with, um, they it wasn't until about six months that they really found out that what the most critical thing for their job was was even though they're hired as an admin um that it was really just to help the office function like i mean i guess it's part of the job of the admin but they thought that they, they needed to help um the ceo's do whatever when really the CEO said, Hey, we're good. We just need to make sure 
that all the um, 10, 11 people in this office that all their projects are running really well. And, and so it actually became a thing for them to then say, oh, I guess I'm actually more of a people person than I realized. And I am good at helping people do this stuff. And it is, it's a challenge because there's all these moving parts, but yeah, I can do that. And now that I really know that that's my job and I don't have to worry about these people over here, I just need to worry about these ones. Well, okay, great, I can do that. So it may be you getting more clarity around that and, and getting like, huh, this is actually a great amount of value that I'm adding here. Now, the other side to it, though, is it sounds like there's there's some pain points in it. And I'm thinking about um, the study in hospitals where they 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 were like, OK, who has the most upset and what's the, the hardest job here? Right. And they're like, it's going to be the doctor. Right. No, it was the person, the technician who's looking at the x-rays because they see all this trauma, they see all these broken bones and stuff and they can't do shit about it. And it just hurts because at least if you're a nurse or whatever. So I'm just, I'm wondering for you, Eric, if in the spot where you're at right now, it's a pain point. And so you're seeing things that aren't working. And it also seems like you're also seeing that you can't do anything about it, except just communicate those pain points. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I think probably what hurts the most is, you know, this is something that like I had been pining for for years and, you know, explored internally in my last role, went through God knows how many job interviews and applications for, I get it, and then, you know, three four months in now like you know it's completely changed and now you know I'm not really in a position where I can just get up and leave it not that I really want to anyway um but it's um it's kind of just frustrating really but yeah it's just kind of how it goes well but are you talking to people about those frustrations um not really uh just because I mean I love my wife but she doesn't work in my field and it'd be really hard to kind of like translate everything. And, um, I do have a mentor that was actually from my last company and that was going to be kind of a discussion I was going to have with him coming up. Cause I have a, uh, meet call with him, um, coming up to kind of discuss that. And he's probably really the only one who would actually be able to understand. So I was going to get his perspective and see what he thinks since we've been working together for a while now, but, um, yeah, otherwise, really outside of that, um, I was going to try to kind of bring it up gently, appropriately in my upcoming annual review to kind of, you know, not maybe not phrase it the way I have now, but more of, you know, I know this role's changing, you know, what, what do I need to do? What can I do to bring value in this kind of new world that this company's operating in? Cool. That's the, absolutely, and and they should know your frustrations too, right? Right. Because your frustration, you're part of the company. What what what's upsetting for you is, you know, important for them to know. And look, right. I mean, so so many of us people like we we don't we don't value ourselves enough and don't really kind of know how to share that. One of I could give you the assignment. Um, Eric, to get compliments, to just go out and have people tell you what you're good at. And, and that's often something that I'll do with people in, in, in this, in, who are in uh, interviewing processes. Because uh, 10 years ago, when people told me like things that they saw that were good about me, I didn't hear it. Like people right. said, you are such an open hearted, warm guy that like, you know, anybody can talk to the way that my brain heard that was you're stupid. And we all kind of have these deep limiting beliefs about ourselves and they show up in what of any kind of way. And so for you to be able to start valuing yourself more is probably, probably uh, one of the things for you to be working on. And this would be a way in your career now 
that because we that's what we're doing here in career lab your life satisfaction overall and your career path is something that helps you realize your potential mm -hmm. and so for you to be saying look i'm upset about these things um i care a great deal about what i'm doing and um you know i want to be of service here's the ways and please you got to tell me if there's any ways that i'm not or that i need to shift things but here's my upsets and and how you know and for you to include yourself that way is it's self-respecting is this landing yeah yeah and i think the other um other tricky bit is that with the new company change i also got a new boss because my prior boss, he got promoted to basically a, a corresponding role in this new company. So we just got a new boss that was hired on a few weeks ago and they're learning the ropes as well. Um, I mean, I know they're, they're working. I mean, it's right now, it's, you know, as you can imagine, the two are working together very closely. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of another wrinkle, but no, I, I think it's, it's all good points. And I think it, this, I think this review is gonna be kind of critical to help set that tone um and you you want to drive the review right right okay cool it's this is this is your car this is your you're the authority in the review and you're going to have way more fun with it and they're going to have way more fun if you're going in with your agenda and you're making things happen and and if at the end of the review they're like oh shoot we need to talk more about this then great right and right. and i i'm i'm Eric, we, maybe we want to touch base more um, just to, or, or not, but the vision that I have for you is that you're going into the review and you come out of it feeling so good about how you've been with yourself in there and how self-respecting you've been and that you've gotten a much better understanding of, of the company and your position in it. And that you're exiting the review and you're like, dang, and you might be afraid. There might be like, oh, shoot, I didn't even recognize some of these other things over here. But OK, great. Right. Now I at least know what I'm doing or really know the, the game on a bigger level. How does that sound? Yeah, no, that, that sounds good. Yeah. And I can definitely, um, you know, I don't know. I think the review would be I don't know when that's going to be, but uh, I can definitely send you an update and kind of tell you how it went. OK, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. And come back in here and let us know how it's going. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. Totally. Um, I was having one more thought about the, oh, one guy that I was working with, um, he interviewed so well at this company that at the end of the interview, they were like, look, um, we really like you, but you basically just asked so many questions that helped us realize that this position that we have here is not really what we need. So like we would give you the job, except you just kind of showed us that this isn't even what we need. So um, we're happy to refer you to some people right. and maybe you can do a little bit of consulting with us, but you just showed that this isn't even needed. So to hold that kind of a level for yourself that you're gonna be so effective in the review and so honest with what is that they might be like, whoa, dang. Okay, we got to talk with Eric Bohr. Yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Khaled. And oh my goodness, we're already 10 minutes out. Um, so I would I'd love to hear from anybody else um how you're relating and any support that you need. Azura, maybe I, I see that you're you are totally in this in the chat. I'd love to hear from you and see um, where you're at as you're uh, in terms of your career and just get to learn a little bit about you. If you can, if not, I, I, I totally get it. Hello. Hello, yes. Hi, so I would love to join on video, but I don't have uh, access to do so. <laughs> gotcha. Absolutely. Well, well is this, I, I was is this Azura? Recently. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you well. So I was on LinkedIn recently, and um, I saw this opportunity. And I have already been like kind of like um, 
manifesting on this path of reconnecting um, with individuals um, in a professional field, but also just trying to reconnect in terms of building on my professionalism. Um, so for me, my day-to-day job um, is a banker, mm-hmm. but my weekend job is a behavioral health technician. And my a, a, a behavioral is technician? In, yes. What's that? A behavioral health technician um, in the capacity of the work that I do is I basically work um, directly with adults that have persistent mental illnesses. Okay. Um, so I have the opportunity of basically helping them to um, gather the tools to become more independent adults. Yes. Um, but of okay, course, great. you know, the, the difficulties is that they're struggling um, and dealing with um, psychological disorders that make it kind of like a barrier for them to be on their feet. Um, so that's one impact that I make, um, you know, just in, 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 in my life. Um, but for me in particular, thinking about kind of like my career and things, which is why I am, you know, trying to re-get connected to networking, um, is because my background is in um, working in a community. I've always had the passion to make an impact. And my studies is in uh, psychology. So I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. And I just totally love making an impact in people's lives and you know, throughout my experience of jobs, I've learned that um, it's important to continue on, um, you know, whether it's giving unconditional love or volunteering or whatever that impact, you know, that that means to other people. Um, I just think that it's important to whatever work that you're doing um, to always make an impact in other lives. And so for me, um, I have kind of, like I said, been manifesting in terms of like reconnecting with people. And I really want to get on a path of maybe going back to school. Um, to fulfill some of my aspirations. Azura, we got to talk more. This is great. I mean, I, I love what you're doing. Um, let's talk more. I, let's just, uh, let's set up a time um, to connect. We're not going to have time to go into it right now. But, you know, just just what you're doing. I'm just checking out your LinkedIn here. Um, it sounds like you are vibrant and hungry and wanting to do a lot. So that's awesome. Sound good? Can we set up a time to talk? Absolutely. Um, you have my contact information from the LinkedIn, so you can definitely um, message me and we can set up a one-on-one, one-on-one. Cool. Cool, cool. And I, there's a few things that we'll share in the in the link. So we actually, Wright Foundation has an MBA program that we've launched, and um, it's uh, and in a graduate university. I did the master's program, so I want to share, talk to you some about that. But I just want to share overall here. Um, we just had the More Life training, which is an introduction to all all of our social emotional intelligence trainings, whether it's our um, doctoral and uh, graduate university or whether it's our leadership development programs. So the next one's not until June, but Azura, that's, you know, if, if you can plan for that now, um, you'd, you'd have to take the time off on Saturday to do it, but it's worth it. Um, a lot of uh, uh, coaches, lawyers, um, social workers will do the training to get CEUs. So um, there's that intrigue for it too. Um, Absolutely. And, and then we also have some um, evening fireside chat type things on Zoom where we'll be sharing more about the MBA program. So we'll make sure to get those shared as well. Um, okay, we've got Joe coming in here. I see the third and fourth. Yep, that's the more life training. That's the... That is a deep dive into social and emotional intelligence training. It's the training that we, um, when, when we did it in person, I mean, we had people fly in from all over the world to do it. Now um, it's online and um, I am so proud of it. I, I, there was uh, people in tech IT who were on it this last weekend who were like, what are you doing with Zoom? I've never been on a training like this. And um, it's 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 good, and so I'm 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 really proud of it. 
Uh, so definitely check that out. And then Absolutely. also- Absolutely, that's why I see power of authenticity, like that stands out to me. Um, and I see that's actually tomorrow from six to eight, right? Yes. Yes, now that, that Judith may, Dr. Judith Wright may touch on the graduate university, um, but she's going to go more into authenticity. She might share a little bit about that, um, but absolutely that will be a wonderful event um, tomorrow evening about how to be authentic. And we really look at this in this moment to moment way, like with Khalid and being more and more his authentic self um, with the with his boss with management and with his vision because that's the beautiful thing about authenticity as the existentialists see it is that it's not about who i am right now because who i am right in this moment is already passing so authenticity is actually about who i can become see if i'm yeah okay beautiful so that that and 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 learning how to use that in a moment to moment way throughout your day um that's what judith is going to be going into so i'd love it if you can absolutely. join in there. absolutely these uh three dates um i see jane jane if you can send this to me uh i would love to attend whichever ones are um i'm available to attend based off my calendar um i okay. do see the one for tomorrow that looks pretty open and then those evening ones look pretty open um, I would need a time for the June 3rd and 4th, um, but I would love to attend. Absolutely. Any opportunity to advance and grow and just learn, um, you know, will be great. So Fantastic. I'm glad that I actually ran across this. This is, this is vital. I believe God has a timing for everything. And if I can learn and grow from the information you're providing, absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, so glad, Azura, that you, you joined in and so glad all of you are here today. Thank you so much. Um, good to see you again, Robin, Tiffany, Joe, great to see you for a moment there. Um, I'm gonna, and Shakira, yes, all good to hear. I'm just gonna scroll through. We got another couple minutes here. So I'm gonna roll through and take a look at some of these questions and just see if I, if I can say anything here. Cause I did get one, um, from Danny Murray through LinkedIn, when you get into a director role, retail store, what should I be doing in the first 30 to 60 days that could help me with my success? <gasps> Love, great question. In most places, most places, the best thing you can do is get to know the people, have one-on-ones. Your interactions with people up front is so important. Um, so, so Danny, um, Everybody that you're working with, if, and if you're actually in person, my goodness, um, set aside 15 to 30 minutes, go get coffee, get lunch if you can with people. Um, it, there's all kinds of research about why this is so important. And even for people on Zoom, if you're working remotely, if you can set up, hey, I, I really want to talk for a little bit and get to know you and how you fit in the organization and set up those one-to-ones with people. Um, it, it basically real, sh I can't go into it. Um, I've talked about it in previous ones. You'll have to go back and look at those because I wanted to also see, um, if I can get in a little bit here for, um, I saw another question I wanted to, to touch on, which was more recent. Oh, Larissa, we can definitely help you. Larissa, you had another question. Is ageism in play? Um, Probably. I mean, what I think has come out in the past two years, especially, and it's always been around, is that um, as, as mature and developed and, and progressive as all people might like to think we are, we're all full of shit. <laughs> and so, I, and unfortunately, ageism and all other kinds of isms are all probably at play all the time. And the best thing to do with that is just to look to, to be, how can I be learning from that and be as effective as I can be, um, given how imperfect all of humanity is. Um, and, how, and, and Larissa, how you would be standing up for yourself in that way and, and, to, and to not let that get in your way, like whatever, you know, um, we, we can talk more about that. Is vaccination still a requirement for this job? As many jobs, yes. Um, IT skills are the most important, are IT skills are the most important jobs? 
Um, you got to know a certain amount, Larissa. Um, so really, that's that's a that that's a kind of depends question. I don't. I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that social and emotional intelligence skills are incredibly important in jobs, even in IT, more and more and more so in IT. Um, so everybody, thank you so much for joining in. Um, I hope to see you again next week. Um, I'll be addressing some more of these questions uh, over the week um, in, in LinkedIn in the comments section. Larissa, so good to see you and looking forward to working more with you. And Azura, you as well. Robert, great to meet you. Looking forward to supporting you. And to Thank everybody, you. many blessings. Go be yourselves, your next most radiant self in your life, in your 